Yo, bros, back with another Yo Elliot video. And today's question comes from Walter Jawowski. He wants to know, Yo Elliot, what do you feel about the way you've evolved and changed over the years? Looking back over the trajectory of your life, what are some mistakes that you made that helped you grow the most? Fair question, bro. And so I'll begin by saying that old Uncle Yo has been on YouTube since 2007. And so it's been a long time, a long journey. A lot of people say, oh, yo, Elliot, you've changed so much, but like it's been 20 years. Who doesn't change over 20 years? And so you guys have been able to watch me be a myriad of different versions of E, right? So big fat straw man, yo, E from way back in the day. And then I started leaning out and doing yo, Elliot Q and A's. And you guys mostly know me from that. I went through a hippie stage and then came back with guns and American flags, and now I'm a Catholic. And so it seems kind of strange, but you gotta remember, like most of y'all started watching me when you were 12 years old, and now you're like 30. And they're like, yeah, I started watching you when I was in, in middle school. And it freaks me out too, but it's like, I'm not the only one that changed. <laughs> a lot of you guys were in diapers, getting your diapers changed, maybe not that old. But a lot of you guys were very young. You were basically pre-teens and teenagers and children. Now you're grown men. So if you're wondering why OE is different, it's cause like, well, I changed and I've been here many, many decades. So, you know, I think the best way to make use of this video is to talk about the mistakes I've made and what I've learned along the way. And so I'm gonna share with you three things I wish I would have known in my early thirties. Cause that's really when I started skyrocketing on YouTube, right? And so uh, the very first thing I wish I would have known when I started out on this entrepreneurial YouTube influencer journey was not to live in the moment. And I get it, it's a very popular adage, people say it all the time, that you should live in the moment, live in the moment, be here now. Um, I fell for that and as a result, I lived in the moment and didn't think about the future. And so I have a tendency not to think about the future by default. In fact, my dad has a saying that I grew up and he always would repeat. He says, I don't know if I'm going to be alive tomorrow. So you know, when we were kids and we'd ask him questions about, like, hey, what are we going to do tomorrow? What's going to happen next year? What's going to happen down the line? My dad would just be like, don't worry about that. I don't know if I'm going to be alive tomorrow. And so I kind of adopted that as a way of life and never really thought about the fact that I might be around 10, 20, 30 years from now on YouTube. Now I realize, hey, what I do today will stick around for many decades. And so I'm much more thoughtful of the future because I also now have a past. And so living in the present means you don't think about the past, right? That's what the, what the, what the gurus would tell you. The past is dead. Don't think about the past. Well, if I don't think about the past, then I never learn anything that I could bring into the present. So I can't live in the moment because it's imprudent. I gotta think about the past and the things that I learned and bring them here, right? And then also, I gotta, you have to live in the future. It, as crazy as that may sound, and it doesn't, maybe it doesn't sound very enlightened, but ultimately, if you're not thinking about the future, you're gonna get there and you're gonna wonder what happened. And that happened with me. A lot of things I've done, a lot of things I've said, a lot of things I've failed to do and say that 10, 20 years later, I'm like, oh, yikes, that came back to bite me. Or man, I wish I would have thought that one through. So lie number one, before I get to number two, is don't live in the present. Don't be here now. Think broad spectrum, have a long time perspective. Living in the moment is foolish. Number two, another popular one that I proposed, I mean, I adopted it, I proposed it. A lot of people know me for it is following your heart. Follow your heart. Just follow your heart. And what are some of my most popular videos are titled Follow Your Heart. Just Google Elliot Hall's Follow Your Heart. And there were like motivational remixes made of me saying, follow your heart in my deep, passionate way. I used to get your little 15-year-old toes curling. And so I, I said that a lot of times because I lived it. And there's one thing you got to understand about me, and I'm not saying this because I'm blowing my own horn, but like, I have a lot of integrity, meaning I can't tell you guys things that I don't actually believe or live myself. And so whatever you see me doing or saying, it's because I'm going through it and I was following my heart. And as a result of following my heart, I 
didn't said a lot of stupid things that had I passed it through the filter of my reason, I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have said that. I'm, and again, it's one of these things where it's, it's sort of my nature to be spontaneous, uh, to do things without thinking them through. And another one from my dad, which he would say to me quite frequently is, Elliot, you got to think before you talk. You got to think before you do something. And I'm so busy living from my heart and doing what I feel, right? And this is why I've been so vigilant about your feelings in the most recent years. A lot of people, you know, don't, they don't like when you say something and then change your mind, but I only change my mind because experience has shown me, oh, wait, damn, that doesn't actually work. Then I gotta go back and I gotta tell you guys, hey guys, be careful. I know I said that before, but it, it doesn't work. And so following your heart is one of those things that sounds real cool, but uh, it leads you down some certain rabbit holes that had I been a little bit more rational about, I probably wouldn't have gone down. And so following the heart is, it, I really spent a lot of time thinking this one through also. I'm a thinker. And so following the heart is a bad idea on, a multiple, on, on multiple different fronts. You know, I spent a lot of time studying bioenergetics and I got a lot of guys who have asked me questions about that. I'll be answering them here in later videos. But one of the things I learned about the body-mind connection is this prefrontal cortex and the mirror neurons that according to attachment therapy, which is a, a form of neuro, uh, I don't know, something, some fancy name in psychology, but where the baby looks into the eyes of the mother when the mother's holding them, the fears of the mother are passed into the baby or the, the, the countenance on the mother's face, be it you know fear, anger, whatever, gets passed into the baby. Like it, it, the mother imprints her consciousness in the baby while, while looking at the baby because the baby is absorbing the world through its eyes and it's very moldable at that time. And so according to these interneurobiology, that's what it's called, inter, interneurobiology, uh, you have something called the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve, they, there's something that's associated with called the polyvagal theory. They call it a theory because I guess, I don't know, maybe it's still theoretical, but it's like, whoa, that actually works. The, the vagus nerve drops from the brain down into like the heart and the organs. It like, and it's polyvagal because it's like, it's wrapped up with your physiology. So it's, it literally like connects the brain to the body. And so what's happening in that prefrontal cortex taps into the vagus nerve and sinks into the heart. And so a lot of what you see stimulates or what you experience here audibly, what you visualize or see, penetrates the heart. And that's another thing you gotta be aware of. Like, not, I mean, I'm talking about childhood experiences and traumas and stuff, but like the music you listen to, the movies that you watch, what you scroll in on TikTok, all that influences not just your mind, but your heart. And so a lot of times you'll be thinking, oh, I'm following my heart because I'm doing what I wanna do. When the fact is like, no, you're not doing what you want to do, dude. You're doing what you saw on TikTok. This is why there's so many young ladies turning into transgenders. It's not because they actually think that they are, I think I'm a, a boy. So they're on TikTok scrolling and watching a bunch of stuff that's penetrating their hearts. That is making them think, oh, maybe I must be a boy. And then they go and have uh, these, these surgeries and medications that are irreversible. And now it's a big problem now about that. But what are those people doing? They're following their hearts, following their heart, following the heart. Father Ripperger calls it, calls it eminence. And it's a byproduct of modernism, which basically means that there's no objective reality. There's no objective truth. What I feel, what I experience, what I think is all encompassing and it's real. And I used to propose that idea. As a result, I would do what I felt a lot of times. And that led me down some, some rabbit holes, uh, like I said before, but like mainly into smoking a lot of weed. And then I would get high and I would think that the things that I'm doing and I'm thinking and I'm saying and the decisions that I'm making are a good idea because I'm like, oh, it's just what I feel right now. Not only is your heart retarded, but now you're high and you're making stupid decisions. So following my heart led me to smoking a bunch of pot, being a pothead at the age of 36. Like who does that? Right. But I was following my heart. That's how I became a hippie and I grew my dreadlocks and, and you know, all that crazy shit that I was doing for a while. But it's cool. I allowed myself to do that. I'm happy I let myself do that because while most of my friends were partying and drinking and chasing puss in their 20s, I was, I was grinding. I was building a family. I was building a business. And so 
in a way, it's kind of bullshit, but I convince myself that like, hey, let loose, E, you get to party a little bit. You enjoy yourself a little bit. You work really hard. I did, but it was, uh, it, it leads me to number three, essentially, right? That whole attitude, follow your heart, and now it's time to relax, leads me to mistake number three, which something I wish I knew, which was don't stop at the top. Don't stop at the top, fellas. A lot of you guys are young and you're grinding and you're working and you're going. And, you know, if you're anything like me, you thought about that day when you got there. I thought about this a lot. I remember being 23 years old, working in a, in a gym as a personal trainer to like nine o'clock at night. And I would, I would visualize, I knew. I was like, there's going to be a day I'm going to retire and I'm going to smoke weed and do yoga. I used to tell myself that. I'm, when I get there, I'm going to smoke a bunch of weed and do yoga. And I, never, I didn't even smoke weed as a teenager. But I knew, I was like, I'm going to take a break and smoke a bunch of weed and do yoga. And that basically means I'm going to stop. And I didn't know that I was going to reach, quote unquote, the top, which really there is no top. I was 36 years old, had a million point eight subscribers on YouTube. I thought I was hot shit, right? And so I took a break, started smoking weed. And it was a slippery slope downhill that, quite frankly, I never really recovered from. <laughs> because if you stop at the top, First of all, if you get to the top, everybody's trying to chop you down from the top. Everybody's looking up at you at the top and they're saying, I'm going to get that motherfucker. I'm going to pass him. And I wasn't prepared for that. I didn't know that was going to happen. Right. I should have known better. I'm an athlete. I play football. You, there's always an enemy. But I was just living in the moment, following my heart, making my videos, having a good time. And then when people started chopping me, trying to chop me down, I, I wasn't prepared for it. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't, I didn't expect it. But I lived in a bubble, in my own warehouse with my camera, right? So I was like, what the hell, these people, why are, they, why are they trying to chop me down? What's going on? I was at the top. And rather than fighting, rather than pushing through, rather than resisting and, and doubling down and doing more, I got lazy and I stopped. Don't stop at the top. When you're at the top, that's when you got to double down and do more, dudes. When you get to the top, that's when you got to work harder. Because staying at the top, I mean, this is what a lot of boxers talk about, right? Like a lot of the best fighters and athletes, like they know that like the work starts when you get to the top. <laughs> I know that sucks and it sounds crazy, right? Because I was, I was, I was broke. I was raising a family. I was trying to build a gym. I was making YouTube videos. I mean, I was, I was doing what most young men should be doing instead of jerking off and playing video games, fellas. I was doing that in my young, in one of my youth, you know, when I was in my... 20s and 30s. So when I got to mid 30s, I was like, okay, I get to break. I get to take a break. Bad idea. Don't do it. So just a review. Don't live in the moment. Live in the moment's a bad idea. Consider the past. Focus on the future. Whatever's going on right now will take care of itself. Number two, don't follow your heart. Do not do it. Your heart is deceitful above all things. Pass it through reason. You got to think things through. Don't just do what you feel in the moment, dude. And then number three, never stop at the top because that's when you got to double down, dude. So I hope that helps. Talk soon. Done. Porn. 68% of church going men watch it secretly, hiding this vice from their wife. For other men, it's alcohol or drug use. Are you willing to risk your marriage, family, and finances for sinful pleasures and vice? Or are you ready to fight back? If you're a married Christian businessman or entrepreneur caught in the clutches of drinking, drugs, or jerking off, realize that every moment spent in these vices is literally destroying your life. Is this the man God called you to be? To live like this? If you're ready to go to war against vice and take your life back, here's my advice. Click the link in this video or visit waronvice.com to book a call with me to see if we're a good fit for going into battle together. I'll see you on the inside.